Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is episode 163 of Child Care Rockstar Radio, featuring Maria Dos Santos. I'm so glad you're with me today. Thanks for coming back to the podcast. I am thrilled to bring you into the interior life of Miss Maria Dos Santos, a child care entrepreneur out of Florida, and she is Venezuelan by descent. Uh, she lived in Europe, and then she moved to South America. Her father was a Navy SEAL. And her mother was a very giving woman that was driven by impact, trying to help others throughout her life. So Maria had that example to follow. And especially with her dad being a Navy SEAL and living in Europe and then South America, outside of the US, she had a global perspective and brings that perspective to the States She founded My First Academy. She has three locations. They each have around 100 children. And opening her fourth location here not too long from now in December of 2023. So you'll meet Maria on this episode. She's an incredible human, uh, a fitness trainer, and very all in on scaling her business. So she does whatever it takes. And that's how she grew up. And that's how she lives her life every day with her family and with her team. I am very excited because I'm actually about to get on the airplane, guys, to uh, fly to Orlando today. I'm recording this episode before I hop to the airport and go host the Child Care Success Summit. We've got over 1,300 of you registered And I'm very, very excited to see all of you and give as many hugs as I can possibly fit in over the next three and a half days. And very excited to meet Damon John and Kevin Brown, who isn't as well known of a speaker to y'all, but he's a very well known speaker with regard to leadership and inspiring your people to show up as the everyday hero that they are, but sometimes they don't realize that they're the everyday hero. They're heroes hiding in plain sight is what he says. So he's going to talk about that. And then the incomparable Vernon Mason will be in the house as well to inspire, make us laugh and give us tips for what he's learning as a co-founder and leader over at The Nest, which has about 30, I think going on 40 locations in the state. So very, very cool. I'm excited. Of course, all of our coaches at Child Care Success are going to be also hosting incredible workshops for y'all, breakout workshops on so many cool topics. And uh, it's going to be an epic experience, I have no doubt. So when you're listening to this episode, if you're listening to it live at the end of October, we will have uh, experienced this all together and hopefully you're coming. And if not, definitely come next year. Personally, I've just been kind of enjoying the fall here in Colorado. It is at peak color season. So we have lots of people driving around, visitors and tourists enjoying what we call leaf peeping season. And I hope that you have had a great fall so far and that you're enjoying the changing of the season. If that's something that happens in the environment where you live, it's one of my favorite seasons with apple cider and pumpkins and pumpkin spice latte and all the things. So Halloween decorations. And I'm very, very excited for all of that. I'm actually doing a challenge right now. I'm in a intuitional coaching group with Amir Zogi, who has been on the podcast. I'm in his inner circle group. And we are doing a 30 day challenge for the entire month of October, which is that we had to add something in to our life that we do every single day as a new practice, a discipline, and then stop doing something or give something up. So I added the Wim Hof classic add 30 seconds of cold, ice cold shower uh, at the end of all of my hot showers. I do a 30 second 
cold plunge, if you will, but it's in the shower, which is challenging. <laughs> I think that cold plunges actually might be easier because you just get in and you just experience it and then you get out. But the shower is a little bit more, ugh. but I've been doing that every single day and I will continue to do it for the entire month of October, even in my hotel room coming up in Orlando. And then I gave up sugar. So for the entire summit and for the entire month of October, probably I'll let myself, I'm going to do it for 30 days. And then on the 31st, which is Halloween, I will have some Halloween candy as I'm passing it out to the little ones. I just can't resist those little fun size Butterfingers and Snickers. I don't know about you. And maybe a Mounds bar too. But yeah, so I'm doing the no sugar thing, no sweets, no sugar for the entire month of October as well. So I'm about 10 days in and I'm very proud of myself. So there, so that might be something that you can be inspired to do. There's a method behind the madness on that, which is that basically the more that you do what you say you're going to do, or don't do what you say you're not going to do, and you actually do it, your monkey mind is watching you and you will start strengthening your value to yourself, your self-worth increases every time you stick to your commitments that you promised yourself you would do versus on the other side of the coin, every time you go on a new diet or start a new exercise routine, and then you blow it off, you make a new, res new year's resolution and you get about 15 days in and then you stop doing it. Your monkey mind is also watching you. And so the more that you do that and you quit on stuff that you said you were going to do, you value decreases, your self-worth declines. So every time that's why we're doing these challenges, right? So I'm interested in increasing my self-worth and my self-value. So I'm doing it. So that's kind of cool and fun. So I'll pass that along to you as something that you might take away as a personal growth and development technique and see how your life changes. With that, let's dive in and learn more about Maria Dos Santos and her incredible story. But before I do that, I have two friends I need to thank real quick. Uh, Frog Street is a partial sponsor of this podcast episode. And Frog Street wants you to know that if you're looking for the perfect curriculum to nurture young minds from infants through pre-K, look no further than Frog Street. At Frog Street, we're all about joyful learning for a kinder world. Our continuum of curriculum is tailored for children from birth to age five, making every step of their educational journey an adventure. With Frog Street, you'll create a nurturing environment where learning is fun, engaging, and developmentally appropriate. Hop on over to our website at frogstreet.com to explore the potential for your child care center today. And this episode is also sponsored in part by Studio 790 Kids. At Studio 790, we provide done-for-you digital interior design kits at your fingertips. We're professional designers who believe in impactful children's spaces. This is very cool. Our experience spans various child care centers, pediatric dentistry, educational spaces, and, and residential homes. Now we empower you to create like us. Together, let's create revenue-boosting environments and spread joy through design. You want parents to have that wow reaction, right? This is how you get there. This is one of the ways you get there, guys. Our mission is to make elevated interior design accessible for every child care center owner. And that's Studio 790 Kids. Google them and visit their website today and check them out. So thanks, friends, for helping sponsor the podcast. So Maria Dos Santos, from Venezuela to Florida, driven by impact. That's what she stands for. She's an incredible human. She talks about her unique benefits and value components of her school. She talks about the technology that she uses and how it's all hooked together and how she keeps her systems and her tech as streamlined and efficient as possible. She talks about her leadership style 
and how she has developed her team as she has scaled her business from one to four locations, almost four locations. And she talks about who has had an impact on her coming up and how she's continuing to pay it forward in her community with families and parents and educators. So let's dive in and get to know more about the beautiful Maria Dos Santos here on Child Care Rockstar Radio. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm so grateful for you to listen. And I have an amazingly special guest today. Her name is Maria Dos Santos. Maria, how are you? Very good. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I'm thrilled that you're here. Where are you right now, Maria? I am in Orlando, Florida, and I'm actually in one of my schools. All right. Well, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, you can see that Maria is actually sitting in a classroom. So very, (laughs) very, very, (laughs) yeah, very ECE oriented background. So I love that. So tell us more about your early learning business. What is the name and what are some of the stats, the size, capacity, enrollment, et cetera? Well, my schools are my first academy. Uh, we are currently, we, we have three schools open and running, each of them around 100 children capacity, some more, some a little bit less. And we officially got the key for number four on Monday. So Congratulations. Very, thank you. Yeah. We have been very busy. So we're expecting to open um, by December with another 100 children. Okay. We are covering all the Central Florida kind of area. We have a school in Kissimmee, in Orlando, and now in St. Cloud. So we're very happy. Um, we're excited. This week has been very busy. Yeah, I bet. Well, that's fantastic. So you're going to expand your reach and your and your impact for more families and kids. So that's great. How long have you been in early learning? Wow, all my life. This is my my, my background. I graduated a long time ago. So I have more <laughs> than 25 years of, the, of being in field. This is right. actually my career. I graduated as an early childhood, always has been in field. So too many years. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> And what inspired you to get into this field in the first place, Maria? I always has been wanting to help others, has been always wanted to make a difference. And I feel like if we start with one child at the time, um, I can make a difference. I have been trying, when I was growing up, I tried to do something different um, or part-time jobs when I was at school, but always has been that lack of, I'm not, my, I'm not impacting anybody. I'm not making any difference. So I always has been having that passion behind me and following a little bit the step of um, my mom. She always has been kind of that humanitarian kind of soul that wants to Mm -hmm. always help somebody. So that's why I kind of, I'm in this field. I I feel like if we change one child or impact one child at the time, we can make a difference. Love that. So obviously you have an accent. So tell us where you are from and how long you've lived in the States. Well, I'm originally from Venezuela. Mm. Um, The funny part is that my first language was Italian. Mm. Because my first five years I grew up in in Europe. My father is um, from the Navy, is a retired Navy SEAL, and wow. we got the chance to travel a lot. So my first five years we were in Europe. Then we went back to Venezuela, but I have been in the state since the 2000. Um, two since the 2000, 23 years. Okay, actually. okay, very cool. Well, I'm grateful that you're here and making such an impact in Florida, and I believe that also you have. Uh, your daughter is also in the business with you. Tell us more about that. Well, I have been, first of all, I never expect my children to be anything involved with the school. They always have been a different path in a different career. Um, her degree is actually in marketing and she was working for a big chain 
and and nothing to do with the school. But the coolest thing is that I have been blessed to be around my family and the support of my family. And right by COVID, um, things have started to be a little difficult for some of the, for my daughter, let's put it that way. She wasn't that happy working. She was working, but then for Tommy Hilfiger, doing their marketing locally. Mm-hmm. So uh, she was a little bit frustrated with the hours, lockdown, and not being able to impact others. And I offered her a job. I said, well, I cannot pay you what Tom is paying you, but I can secure your weekend off, holiday off, and you are definitely going to impact somebody. So she decided to move in, which has been a blessing. And she helps me not only with the marketing, but she helped me with all enrolling the children, um, training my enrolling specialist, doing everything that is related to marketing. And little by little, I think that I'm just working and planning my Etsy. Yeah. But it's kind of, okay, <laughs> I got her in now. So let me just keep training her. <laughs> right. Well, that's a blessing yeah. for sure. And for her to be handling one of the most important parts of the business that a lot of people don't put enough focus on with the marketing and enrollment building side, enrollment specialist side of the business. So that's Fantastic, Maria. That definitely sets you up for with your expansion to school number four to be able to quickly fill it and to get your cash flow back from uh, the investment that you're making to open another location. Definitely, yes, totally agree. Um, uh, we have been having an amazing school with you, Grow Your Center, and she has been so hands on. Uh, with Bruce and and with all the team, and she has been learning a lot. And and I think that everything combined is what makes us what we are today. Yeah, that's great. I love that, and I love to be part of the story on, on both sides of the of that between Grow Your Center and and Academy. It's, it's fantastic. So, tell us a fun fact about you. Anything that you want to share that not that many people know? Well, I have a couple of things. Um, I'm certified. A personal trainer, mm. and I actually am a certified spinning train uh, teaching instructor, which I love. At the same time, because of my father background, I have been able to to be and travel inside of a battle navy ship and the same of my army um, uh, aircraft. So I have been having a couple of cool things um, that people normally do not know that about me. Right. That's very cool. Yeah. And the fact that you had such inspiring parents that, you you know, your father was a Navy SEAL and definitely somebody that was pushing for excellence and that your mother was such a giver and wanted to make a difference for the planet and for humanity is, so you've had a lot of amazing inspirations in your life. Yes. So that's, it sets Definitely. you up foundationally to uh, make a big difference. So I love that. Tell us a little bit more about My First Academy in terms of what you offer the community that sets you apart, things that are more of your unique features and benefits that you lead with? One of the things that we strive is doesn't matter where the new location is going to be or when uh, all my location, I try to make the classroom small uh, because I like to be kind of a unique. I'm not looking to to be this big school with a lot of children and and lose that sense of uh, family business oriented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we always try to to forecast that we are um, a small places, a small classrooms. Doesn't matter if my competitor across the street can fit two hundred more children. I'm I'm just I'm not looking to have more children. I'm just looking to impact the the few that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, we try, I because this is my field, I create my own curriculum. So I have been taking the best of all the philosophy and I create my unique curriculum. Uh, definitely, I involve a lot, of, a lot of language, not only the Spanish, but we also have um, the sign language as well for my okay. younger clients. And because of my, gra- my background of um, trainer, I kind of work that menu to try to make it a very healthy and kind of make it organic and try to avoid a lot of the junk food. So it's a little bit of, we we use those 
going to sell a lot at the school. Mm. Besides that, I try, even that I'm I'm not a hundred percent kind of working on any more hands on on my school, I'm always popping in or somebody from my family can be my daughter or my husband. So they kind of get that sense of that it is a family oriented. Doesn't matter if now we're becoming kind of a chain because we're having now four school in the area. Yeah. Uh, but we try to keep it as we're a family and and that's the way that I wanted to keep it. So are you still working at all actively as a trainer or a, a spinning instructor? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of time anymore. I, I figured. The, the funny thing is that, I, that when I say yes, is because I train myself. That for sure. I train my husband. Um, so I kind of keep it a small inner circle. I train mm-hmm. my, my leadership team. They kind of, okay, every time that they need that little push we kind of do things fun together so right that is the way that I keep it together with the spinning cool. class got already too much to be kind of attached to a schedule so I yes step up a little bit yeah no I, I figured I just had to ask because I'm fascinated with <laughs> with that whole piece yeah that's because I'm I have a home gym and I have a Peloton and I'm doing a lot of workouts on different apps and different things and YouTube and uh, with people's classes. And of course, Peloton comes with a, a ton of different classes, whether they're yeah. spinning or regular. So um, I'm trying to keep up with the youngsters, Maria, and trying to stay at least moderately fit for somebody in I her mid, <laughs> mid 50s. It's, it's challenging. It's challenging. It is. It is, but <sighs> yeah, I, I'm I'm in the same boat. Let's yeah. put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 good. So you said about you're not really much working in the business at all anymore, and you've gone probably through some a, a personal journey of sorts in your leadership, developing your leadership team. Because when you started, I'm guessing that you were kind of wearing all the hats and doing everything. So talk a little bit about the most pivotal pivotal points in that journey from being wearing all the hats to now you're pretty much not doing anything in the day to day. How did you get there or what are some pieces of advice for people that are trying to get there? First of all, it's not easy because as an owner, you're still being pulled in a lot. Uh, but I have been blessed to find the right team that's around me to begin with my family and then my leadership team. So at the beginning is what you said. I have been the teacher, the director, the assistant, the bus driver, you name it, everything together. But just to train the right people and trying to find a way for them to stick with you little by little, that is what has been helping me to kind of be able to to work on my business and not in my business. Mm -hmm. I like, for example, when I open a new school in in the next few months, I'm going to be invested there because that is what I do. I like to to be there present and for my people to learn directly from me. After I have that will kind of run it by themselves, that is when I step out. So that is one of the things that I, I, I... Totally, I'm a hands-on, but I have to train my people the way that I like things to be done. Yeah. After I see everything kind of, okay, you got it. You know what is here so you can help me to keep going. That is when I step out. And and now more, the beauty that now is, is my daughter because I feel like she, she knows already my vision. She has been with me even when she wasn't involved since the, she she was very young. So th- she knows my story and mm-hmm. I feel like she knows how to project that. Mm-hmm. So with this fourth location that you are expanding to, is this a location that was an existing childcare program that had closed or that was still running? I mean, you're not actually building something from dirt, right? Th- that is the beauty because <laughs> I, actually, I actually bought a building for my location number four Okay. Two years ago, and we have been uh, in waiting and waiting for wow. everything to be ready. And the city has not been easy to kind of approve my project. In the meantime that we're waiting, um, somebody just knocked the door and said, hey, uh, this is school is, that is leasing this place is actually leaving. Would you like to take over this oh, space? Wow. So the space is ready. It's just turnkey 
I'm just actually doing the painting and brand, branding or I just has my first academy. So that is the beauty. With the building, I kind of got a little bit of hope after listening to Coach Steve with how many years they took to open their uh, leaders. Yes. School. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to sell the property because I'm not going to be sitting waiting for okay. the city to kind of give me the permit. So okay. I'm not starting from scratch. My number four is it's it's a blessing that it's already done. I'm just putting my touch. Mm-hmm. And that is why we're going to be able to open in December. Got it. So is that school also staffed where you're also going to be pulling those staff to your vision and you're retraining them and keeping those staff that were there as well as families? Well, and the, the location and the fa- they everybody's gone. So, okay, of course, okay. I, 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 because it's okay. close right now. So you're not, you're not taking over an existing no, staffing no. situation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Gotcha. I did take over. My third location was, uh, uh, I took over that location was mm-hmm. open running and I took over and changed name and did everything. But right. this time I'm starting from scratch again. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and there's pros and cons. I mean, we teach and we discuss this all the time in the yes. Academy, which is, you know, and so in a way it, if I had my druther, even though it's nice to have that instant cash flow, you're inheriting potentially so so many issues in a different culture, it might even be harder and longer of a journey to try to get everybody to your vision. So I kind of like just going into an empty shell and then filling it from scratch with your people yes. and your clients and, and all of that. So that's, yes. that's good. Okay, cool. And so you're going to sell the other one that you were waiting for two years. You're selling that. A building and a land. Yes, wow. we are. It's on the market. Okay. So I said, okay, okay. we All cannot right. do much. Let's get some money back. So if you're in the Orlando area, guys, and you want a great opportunity, go buy Maria's <laughs> location yes. on the podcast. You might find a buyer from this podcast. You never know. You never know. You never know. Very cool. So with your expansion, when you went from one to two, two to three, and now three to four, any lessons about scaling? Because you have to be in multiple places at once, once you, especially when you get to, some people say the second one's the hardest. Some people say the third one's the hardest. Mm-hmm. Kind of like when you have, go from two kids to three kids and you have one for each hand and then the third one's like, ah. Um, so when you were scaling your business, any lessons or wish that I would have done differently around your journey uh, of scaling your business? I'm actually going to say the more than a learning, something that I wish that I did different, I'm actually proud to say that just because I started with you before opening the second one, and because I have been putting myself to learn as much as possible, even that I don't ask a lot of questions, but I'm just paying a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I have been kind of preparing myself for that move of um, having the second and the third, creating system has been the key. Yeah. Uh, Of course, you learn something new all the time and you kind of treat things here and there and you're constantly changing or improving um, systems that maybe did work when we were only two, but now that we're three, we need to do things different. But the key has been always... um, to learn, to grow, and to seek help. And I honestly has been kind of using to the mats anything that the academy can offer. Mm -hmm. So I have been kind of learning everything that other people have to say, uh, their issues, their problem. And I have been learning how to avoid those things just to be proactive. Yeah. Maria, for those of you guys that don't know her and you're not familiar with the Academy is in our empire level and it's the highest level of membership. And I have noticed that you are definitely more one of the quiet ones, Maria, when you come to the meetings, you definitely sit back. It sounds like you're taking a ton of notes. You're learning a ton. You're absorbing it all. You don't ask her. I don't know if hardly any have ever asked a question, but I can see you because I see that you're, you're always there. You're always present. And you're learning a ton. So I love that. And so tell us a little bit about 
the actual systems that you use, you mentioned Grow Your Center. We'll talk about that briefly. But in terms of the software, like what you're using for your child care management software, what you're using for your CRM, how, how the systems speak to each other, what you've learned to put those things together on the technology side, it just speak to that a little bit. Is there any lessons learned there or just what are you using that you like? Uh, first of all, I like I like a little phrase that says, if it's not broken, why to fix it? Yes. So I have been quite, and, and sometimes changes is hard for some people. So we try to, if it's working well and everybody kind of learn how to use a system, we just take advantage to kind of take, 100% out of what that product has to offer. So we definitely use ProCare and okay. combined with the ProCare, we use IKS um, has a CRM. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of almost everything is that with the help of Grow Your Center, everything kind of work together and everything kind of sync together. Cool. So all my my uh, software that we use, everything kind of uh, integrate to each other and is the same we use procare um connect to con uh, to be connected to the parent as well so it's that is kind of an assistant that runs on their own website connect with my crm <coughs> crm connects to procare procare connects to the parent so yeah. why am i going to change something right so if everything works so beautifully um, I definitely have been learning and creating and using other methods to kind of work my with my leadership. We use Monday.com to kind of keep everything organized and task. We use Bamboo HR to be able to help us with the onboarding and everything that is related to the HR with my uh, employees because those are the things that we have been learning. I didn't have any of this when we were only one school with 20 employees. Right now that we are uh, getting close to be 80 employees mm. and one location is like, yep. okay, I have to be able to manage things even if I'm not present or if I'm traveling. So those are the softwares and tools that we have been kind of using and has been working awesome. fine for us. I love that. And for those of you guys that don't know, or you're not using a project management slash productivity software, monday.com uh, is a fantastic one. Coach Jody used, used, did a whole session on how she uses Monday and presented to the Empire people in the Academy. And we also have experience. My team uses Asana and we use Slack. Uh, and with hiring, a lot of people are using Bamboo HR in the industry as well. So I love all of these systems. I just find it to be fascinating because we have to get better at technology in this industry. A lot of the folks yeah. in early early learning are technology laggards. They're not early adopters. They're the opposite. So I'm always trying to inspire and motivate people to use technology in their schools because today's parents really want it. They expect it. And it will, once you have it set up, can generally save you a ton of time and hassle and get your systems set up properly. So, Definitely. so let's talk a little bit about GYC. Um, what are you using in terms of GYC done for you services that you are finding the most value from? Honestly, I'm using everything that they have to offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you, you a great you, client? You ask, you ask a product. You, we, yeah. We're doing it with them. So right. they have been, um, First of all, I feel like we have a very good relationship, uh, marketing-wise, social media, website. We get to meet with them every, like if I need a meeting with them, I just uh, schedule yeah. something on the calendar and they're available uh, to, to work with me, nice. work with my daughter. So I'm using, um, I do have a little bit of self pays doing it in regards of what we post sometimes right. mm -hmm. they create things for me but at the same time we add and we do a little bit of our our, our own yes but they i have full service with the ips full service with um the website mm -hmm. and now the, with the hiring a plus the recruitment well. yeah with okay. the recruitment process as well so okay. i'm very pleased because um yes i have them but at the same time i work with them 
Yeah. My daughter would work with them too. So it's kind of part of my team. Yeah. And definitely, this is something that you cannot do on your own. You do, mm-hmm. you do need a team working with you. Completely agree. You know, and I know that some folks have had issues with, you know, just this. I think ha- what you're doing, Maria, about having somebody on your team that is the conduit to work and get the most out of your GYC investment, reach out, set a meeting, get on their calendars, make sure everybody's got their ducks in a row, you know, just be proactive. And that's what you're doing. And then the, the other piece that you're doing that's best practice is to do your own, a little bit of your own social media content, in addition to what you're getting from Grow Your Center, because the whole picture is a much more vibrant uh, branding approach to your social media than you would have if you were just relying on them alone. So but right. love how you love what you're doing, love putting the personality in, love that you have your daughter running that for you. So I'm so happy to hear, because before I got on this podcast with Maria, I didn't know any of this. And it's just nice to know, you know, to see examples of it working really, really well, the way it was intended to work. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. Where are you headed for 2024? So obviously you're opening your fourth location in December and congratulations for getting over the hurdle of that other one and coming to this one and all of that, that like manifested for you beautifully. So in 2024, what's next for you? Where are you headed? We have more exciting news. We are very happy. I should be having by the end of December, my first Academy Corp office that we're building from a scratch. So I'm looking wow. so forward for that. I have, my daughter is getting married in December and my son is getting married next year. So I'm looking forward for those two weddings and for somehow I'm looking forward to be a young grandma. Wow. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm asking every day, hey, I'm waiting. Are we ready? So I'm the one pushing that I wanted to be a very handsome grandma. I'm looking forward <laughs> for that. <laughs> and at the same time, one of the things that um, is my husband goal and we're looking forward, he wants to to give me the Spain citizenship. So we're working on that as well. Oh, fun. So that's my, my goal for 2024. Well, that is fantastic. I love the wedding season that you're going to be in. It's so much fun. Um, I'm a little bit behind you on that with my kids only being 21 and 18, but my son has a very steady girlfriend. They've been dating for two years. Oh, so nice. you know, they're both she's just turned 22 today is her actual birthday and his, but so I'm like, you guys don't necessarily be in any huge hurry because you're still only 21 and 22. But it would be nice to have some new little babies running around. I'm not gonna lie. I love little babies. So whenever whenever the time is right. Uh, correct. That's you know, what I said. Love but you that. know, right now we have two two dogs that we're treating like our grandchildren. Oh so yeah, we need real ones. <laughs> I know. And my dog Ruby just turned one, and I'm I'm absolutely spoiling her like a grandchild as well. So, yeah. So you and I are in that that ballpark together, and I love the wedding season for you. That's fantastic. Um, great. Well, how can people reach out and learn more about my first academy and connect with you? What's the best way? The website has all the connections right there for Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook. The the other funny part is that you can find me on social media, but no has Maria, because I actually started using my first name in this country because legal purpose. I always have my family and people that really, really know me, knows me for my middle name, which is um, Carolina. Oh, so every every social media that I own and have is actually Carol or Carolina, Carolina. nothing to do with Maria, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but definitely the website has a little bit of um, our bio, my contact information, and the school, and and the website actually is beautiful. Shows all the locations, and we have virtual tour on the website as well. So beautiful. a lot of information is already right there on the on the website which is just my first academy.com. Oh, fantastic. I love when you can get the domain name that matches your brand. Yes. My first academy.com. Awesome. Um, anything else that you would like to share with the viewers and listeners before we say goodbye? Well, one of the things that I wanted to share is that if you put your mind into it, 
you can accomplish anything that you want. And one of the proudest moments that I have and I share with my children, and I feel like it's, it's what they have been seeing in me, my husband and my parents, is that being an immigrant, we came here in 2000 with nothing. And right now we are 23 years later, we are here with four school. Even in 2009, right before opening my first school, uh, we filed a bankruptcy. So just the fact that we have been going through all those ups and downs, yeah. and we have been doing our best from eating only out of mac and cheese from a box because we didn't have money to buy anything else, to being where we are now, that we always have been showing them how to be grateful how to to be able to bless other and that's what we want them to learn and and all my stuff everybody knows my story and where I'm coming from and and I feel proud just to be able to say I came here with nothing and right now 23 years I have what I have yeah well I love that story and I love that you know what, your your thoughts there Maria are very very special and heartfelt to me I was feeling all the love that you were sending to the world as you were speaking those words. And uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast and inspiring people today. I think your story as an immigrant and what you have created from nothing is extremely inspiring and um, love to have you back. And we could talk more about the uh, detail of some of the things that you've overcome and that you've gone through in your journey. So Look forward to maybe uh, episode number two with Definitely. you. And uh, But for those folks that get the chance to see Maria at the mastermind meetings in the academy, definitely take the opportunity to go up and talk to her more because she is definitely one of the more quiet ones. And <laughs> you want to just get to know her because there's a lot of gems uh, there that you just revealed and shared over the last uh, half hour. So thank you so much, Maria, for your time today. I really appreciate no. it. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you have been sharing with us as well. You're welcome. It's It's been my blessing and to be on this journey has been very, very um, just incredible. So there's not even a word to use. Like there's not know, right? like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's, it's been, it's just been, it's been my life's work and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Perfect. Thanks everybody for tuning in again to another episode of child care rockstar radio. We really appreciate you listening alongside us or watching and uh, thanks Maria. Take care and God bless. And we'll see you soon. You as well. Bye. Okay, bye. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Child care business success is my passion and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the What's My Number One Income Killer quiz, exclusively for preschool and child care owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.